All right, buckle up, because today we're diving headfirst into a world of shadowy deals, political power plays, and maybe even a touch of espionage. Sounds intriguing. It is, and we're doing it all through Frank Julius's thriller, The Red Jewel. It's a wild ride through post-Soviet Russia, and I can't wait to unpack it all with you. You've come to the right place, then. This isn't just some fictional thriller, you know? This book gives us a peek behind the curtain, a look into a time of massive upheaval after the fall of the Soviet Union. Talk about a historical turning point. So much change, so much uncertainty. Where do we even begin? Well, imagine the scene. The Iron Curtain falls, and suddenly Russia is thrust onto this new stage, trying to become a market economy. Opportunity is everywhere, but it's also a time of chaos, you know? Things are changing so fast. It sounds like the Wild West, only with even higher stakes. Exactly. And into this chaotic landscape walks Eldon Davis, our all-American hotel tycoon, full of ambition. Eldon's the one who wants to build the Red Jewel, right? <laughs> that massive skyscraper in the heart of Moscow. The one and only. He's determined to make his mark, but little does he know he's stepping into a real hornet's nest of political intrigue and, well, let's just say flexible business practices. This is where Viktor Orlov, the new president of Russia, comes into play, right? Along with figures like Sasha Bebchak, the head of the FSB. Ah, yes, Bebchak. The mere mention of the FSB sends shivers down my spine. It's like stepping into the shoes of the old KGB. And let me tell you, those are some shoes you don't want to fill. So we've got Eldon, our ambitious businessman, caught in this web of political maneuvering. What could possibly make things more complicated? How about we throw in the Russian joint venture system? The what? Yeah, it's a mouthful, but it's crucial to understanding how business got done, or should I say got done, in Russia at that time. Yeah. You see, Western companies like Eldon's, they couldn't just waltz in and set up shop. They needed a Russian partner. Sounds reasonable enough. Two heads are better than one, right? In theory, sure. But in reality, it created this whole other layer of complexity and risk. Think of it like this. Imagine you're a Western investor and you want to open a bakery in Moscow. You find a Russian partner, invest a ton of money, but then let's say they decide they don't like the way you bake croissants. Uh-oh. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. You got it. Your Russian partner could easily use their influence to push you out, take over the business, and you'd have little to no legal recourse. So it's a recipe for disaster, especially if you stumble upon a less than scrupulous partner. Precisely. And that's where figures like Alexander Mikin enter the scene. Okay, I'm sensing this is where things take a turn for the worse. Who is Alexander Mikin and what role does he play in all of this? So we've got Eldon, our ambitious hotel tycoon, walking into this web of political maneuvering and shady business deals. And now we're adding Alexander Mitkin to the mix. I'm getting nervous just thinking about it. You and Eldon both. Mitkin is the epitome of the darker side of Russia's transition. This is a guy who used to be KGB, right? Now he's running this powerful and ruthless organized crime ring. You name it, he's got his fingers in it, especially when it comes to Western businesses trying to make a go of it in Moscow. I bet Eldon's dream of building the Red Jewel just got a whole lot more complicated. You can say that again. And here's the thing about Mukin. He's not just about intimidation and racketeering, though he's got plenty of that too. His organization preys on the vulnerable, especially young women. Like Kata, the young Hungarian girl the book mentions. Exactly. Lured to Moscow with the promise of a better life, only to end up trapped in a nightmare. It's a good reminder that behind these big power plays and business deals, there are real human lives being affected. Absolutely. It's easy to get caught up in the political maneuvering and the ambition, but stories like Kata to remind us of the human cost of this kind of unchecked corruption. So we've got this backdrop of organized crime, and then we add another layer, espionage, the FSB and their Black Bear project. What is Black Bear? It sounds ominous. That's because it was. Remember how we talked about that instability after the fall of the Soviet Union? Well, Sasha Bebchuk, the head of the FSB, he had his own way of dealing with that uncertainty, and that was surveillance. And not just any surveillance, right? We're talking next level spy tech. You got it. The FSB somehow, and the book is a little fuzzy on the details, but somehow they got their hands on this advanced American surveillance tech. They called it Rowl. Rowl, huh? Sounds innocent enough. What was his purpose? Oh, you know, just keeping tabs on guests in those fancy Western hotels like the one Eldon was building. Private conversations, business deals, nothing was off limits. Wait a minute. 
So guests like Eldon had no idea they were being watched. Nope. Talk about a violation of privacy. But that was the point, wasn't it? Control. In the absence of clear rules, Bebchuk wanted to control the information flow. Knowledge is power, right? And what's even more unnerving is that this Rowell technology could see through walls, according to the book. This is like something straight out of a James Bond movie. It really was cutting edge for its time. And you're right, it is pretty unnerving. But it highlights the ethical questions at the heart of this story, doesn't it? Where do you draw the line between national security and individual privacy? Especially in a world that's changing as rapidly as Russia was at that time. Exactly. So you've got Bebchuk with his surveillance state and Mitkin with his organized crime empire. It makes you wonder, were they working together? Were their goals aligned? Or were they on a collision course? It's a recipe for disaster either way. You said it. And poor Eldon is caught right in the middle of it. And knowing Eldon, he's not the kind of guy to just sit back and let things happen, is he? Not a chance. Yeah. Eldon is furious about the corruption he sees everywhere, especially the exploitation of young women like Kati. So he hatches a plan. He's going to take Mitkin down himself. Wait, what? How Eldon's a smart guy. He uses his connections, his resources, and orchestrates this elaborate sting operation to expose Mitkin and his whole network. It's getting good. It is, but it's also incredibly risky. Eldon knows he's putting himself in danger, but he's determined to do what he thinks is right. The fate of Moscow might hang in the balance. I have to ask, how does this sting operation play out? Well, I don't want to give too much away because the book does such a fantastic job of building the suspense. But let's just say things come to a head at the Holiday Jewel Danimo. Another hotel. Oh, yeah. This one was run by one of Mitkin's guys. It all goes down there. Eldon, Mitkin, the FSB. It's a recipe for chaos. Talk about a city on edge. What happens next? Does Moscow implode? Well, not literally. Mm -hmm. But after the events at the Holiday Jewel Danimo, right. everything changes. Like what? There's an assassination. Mm -hmm. All the Western hotels, they get shut down temporarily. And Mitkin's empire. Mm. Let's just say it's not looking so good. Wow. This is huge. With everything falling apart, what about the Red Jewel? It's the question on everyone's mind, right? Does Eldon cut his losses and run? He's come this far. It's hard to imagine him giving up now. You're right. Eldon's not a quitter. But the question is, can he even salvage his dream amidst all this chaos? So, last we left off, Moscow was in chaos. Mitkin's organization, the FSB, Eldon, and his Red Jewel, all caught in this whirlwind of uncertainty. What happens next? Well, picture this. Moscow is on edge. Rumors are flying. Nobody knows what the future holds. It's the kind of atmosphere where power plays become even more strategic, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Every move must be calculated. So what happens? Does Eldon just throw in the towel? Not a chance. Eldon's determined to see his vision through no okay. matter what. Remember that grand opening we talked about? The one for the Red Jewel? Hard to forget the opening of the tallest skyscraper in Europe. Well, get this. Even with everything going on, Eldon doesn't reschedule. The grand opening is still on. Wow, talk about a power move. He's facing down chaos and saying, we're open for business. Exactly. And to make things even more interesting, guess who attends the grand opening? Don't keep me in suspense. Who is it? None other than President Viktor Orlov himself. Whoa, that's a statement if I've ever heard one. What do you think Orlov is trying to signal with that move? Oh, I think it's pretty clear. Orlov is asserting his authority. He's showing the world that Moscow is under control, that he's the one calling the shots. And let's be honest, it's a brilliant PR move. Absolutely. But it makes you think, was this whole time about more than just building a skyscraper for Eldon? Was it about playing a role in this high stakes game of power? It makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah. But there's one more twist to the story, something that really makes you question everything. Don't tell me there's more. I don't know if I can handle another plot twist. Oh, but this one's a doozy. Remember that Rowell surveillance technology, the one the FSB was using to spy on everyone? How could I forget? It was like something out of a spy film. Well, it turns out it wasn't even fully operational in Moscow yet. Wait, are you serious? All that worry about being watched and the system wasn't even online? It's almost comical, isn't it? All that fear and paranoia and for what? It makes you think about how easily we can be manipulated by fear, even when there's no real threat. Wow. Talk about a powerful message, especially for anyone interested in international affairs and the complexities of power dynamics. The Red Jewel goes way beyond a simple thriller, doesn't it? It really does. It forces us to confront uncomfortable truths about ambition, corruption, and the human cost of progress. And the best part is that it leaves us with more questions than answers. 
And that's what makes this such a fascinating deep dive. It's a reminder that sometimes the most important questions are the ones that linger long after the story is over. You said it. It makes you wonder, in a world that's constantly changing, where the lines between right and wrong aren't always clear, what compromises are we willing to make? And more importantly, what lines are we unwilling to cross? Those are questions worth pondering, to say the least. Well, folks, there you have it. A glimpse into the wild world of post-Soviet Russia through the lens of Frank Julius's The Red Jewel. It's a story of ambition, corruption, and the enduring power of hope, even in the face of uncertainty. We'd like to thank you for joining us on this incredible deep dive into The Red Jewel. It's a story that will stay with us long after the credits roll. We'll see you next time for another thrilling exploration of our complex world.